Sao Paulo. In 2002, change was in the air. Incoming left-wing president Lula da Silva had won over the banks and institutions in Brazil's financial capital. And there was optimism in a country that has over $260 billion worth of debt. But among those who'd elected him on promises of creating 10 million new jobs and alleviating hunger with the Zero Hunger Programme, there were now questions. O programa Fome Zero, sem dúvida, que é uma iniciativa boa, mas é apenas... The Zero Hunger Programme was a good initiative without a single doubt, but it was only a way of treating the disease, not curing it. Because otherwise, we stay with the illusion of giving out a basic ration of food every month. I think that is not the role of the president to hand out food every month. The role of our government is to create jobs, to make sure that the factories work and that they play their social role, right? That's what I think a government should do. Three years before the presidential election, Geraldo de Souza was one of 2,800 car workers laid off by the Ford factory in São Paulo. He was a worried man. This is my home. Four years ago I was paying rent, so I started to borrow some money. Losing my job is very difficult. That's Mateus, Ivy, and she's my wife. My name is I would like to know why I lost my job. I would like to get an answer because I haven't found the reason for all this until now. Back then, documentary filmmaker John Alpert had offered to help Geraldo. He wanted to know why the global effects of the 1997 Asian financial crisis damaged Brazil's debt-laden economy and cost people like Geraldo their jobs. Brazil has the ninth largest economy in the world, heavily underwritten by American banks. So in 1997, the globalized economy increasingly mattered to it and to individuals like Geraldo. Today, Geraldo has his job back, but the big questions remain the same. His employer, Ford, is the second biggest car manufacturer in the world, but it's fighting a worldwide economic downturn in automobile sales. Geraldo's life and livelihood still seem to depend on the fluctuation of the world's financial markets. When I received a telegram asking me to return to the factory, it was a shock. Ever since I've been happy, the bitterness and the anguish of staying at home are forgotten. When you work, 80% of your problems are solved. I would like you to answer some of the questions I've been asking myself about the revenue distribution, firms, employment. Why do they fire workers? To make even more profit? Where does all the profit go? I have a special guest here today, Geraldo, Kevin Tynan. And Kevin works for Argus. It's a research company, and Kevin's going to introduce himself to you. Okay, Gerald, what we do, and I do specifically, I cover the automobile industry uh, as far as equity research, Wall Street, for our company. Uh, what that means is I study General Motors, uh, Daimler Chrysler, and Ford Motor Company, um, their operations, their fundamental strengths, and then evaluate the share price does Ford make a lot of money here in Brazil? As far as profit, no, they finished the year at a loss in Brazil and for the whole company, so Ford's in a tough time. Eu acredito que aí não dá para colocar um robô porque são peças pequenas e para pegar e dobrar, encaixar não dá. Tem determinados lugares que o robô ainda não, não consegue ainda, por exemplo, numa peça, 
para sá, assim teria certas dificuldades para encaixar. Mas muy, muitas coisas a gente sabe que o robô é lógico faz. I know, like, like I said, you and your peers take a lot of pride in the vehicles.